Hi guys, welcome to the image brush exercise. Um, in this exercise I just want to show you how you might create your own little brush out of some of your own um, illustrative uh, elements. So um, what we're going to try and do is, I've just, I've just, we've started, I've got a brush here, yeah. Um, but I'm just going to show you a few things to make it possibly that might be useful for you to make it better. Um, because um, as you can see, it draws very fast and it doesn't change sizes, etc., etc. So uh, let's go, let's just refresh that and we can see where we got to. The first thing we need to do is we, um, the best thing to look at here is the first thing is this. We save our, we load in an image um, and we load our brush PNG to that um, image variable. So you can see here, our brushes are here. That's our brush PNG, a little smiley face, yeah? Um, so we've got that loaded in. Um, we've set up our canvas, great. Um, in our draw function, if the mouse is pressed, yeah? Um, I think you can probably just do that. If mouse is pressed, then um, draw the image using our brush here, yeah? As the image. Um, and the mouse X and mouse Y position as the X and Y and let's make it 50 pixels by 50 pixels Okay, so that's where we've that's all this down here. You don't need yet So that's all there is to show how to draw And create a brush. Yeah, so my smiley face is loading in like that That's fantastic. The reason that you can see it as a brush is because in this draw function We've got no background if you put a background in here It just looks like it's following when you draw, yeah. Um, so if we get rid of that background, you can see every dumped image that has come before the current draw frame. Okay, but there's a few things wrong with this. I think that some of you guys, I'm actually responding to a specific question um, from um, Eloise. Um, she wanted to draw, uh, oh it's a screen recording so I can't show you, but she wanted to draw lots of bits of wattle onto the, um, onto the screen. So with that I'm, I was thinking, looking at her work, I was thinking that we probably need to have some element of random um, size. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use p5's random function. And we're going to do it's a random size between 10 and 50. Okay, you can see that we've got an error there because it's actually making a random height and a random width. So it's not respecting um, our, our ratio of our image, which actually <laughs> drawing like this looks sort of cool. But um, let's just show you how you would do um, it with a, we'd save our random width as a variable. So we'd say let image width equal a random number between 10 and 50. And that means we'll save it and then we can use image width as the height width and as the height. And that means the width will be the same as the height. Yeah, so it'll be a square, so it'll respect our square ratio. Now the other thing that you can see here is that I think this draws a bit fast for what um, Eloise was uh, looking for. So I think she's going to want to drop wattle with a bit more space between it, rather than it building up on each other to create these very heavy things. Yeah. Um, so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to just create up here I just want to draw a brush only every three draw functions. Yeah, so it's going to reduce the speed at which we draw by three. So it's only going to draw every third third mouse move. Yeah, or third draw function. Okay, so that's what the brush counter limit is. And then I'm just going to save a brush counter that equals one. And then. Oh, actually, we're going to make the brush counter equal zero. And then we're going to put um, 
we're going to have a function, we're going to write a function that increments the brush counter. This is quite like that screen increment function that you've probably seen in a few other videos. So increment the brush counter, we're going to increment brush counter by one, but if brush counter ends up being greater than the counter limit, three, we're going to set it back to zero. Yeah, so it's just going to go zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. Yeah. Um, so we're going to write that function in here. Um, I'm going to put that above this. So we're going to increment the brush counter every time the mouse is pressed. Yeah. And then if the brush counter equals zero, we're going to draw the image. Yeah. So that means we're only going to draw it on zero. So every time draw runs, it's going to increment the brush counter. If it's zero, it'll draw. If it isn't, it won't draw. So it won't draw on when, when we increment to one, it won't draw when we increment to two, it won't draw when we increment to three, but then it, when it gets reset to zero, it will draw the image. So that'll just slow it down and give some more space between the images. So in relation to Eloise's um, uh, drawing wattle on a frame, uh, wattle pieces, I think that you know, feels like it might be more suited to her. She might want it slower, but if she wants it slower, she can just change this to be 10 and it'll be much slower. It'll only draw you know, like that, yeah? So she can play with this value to see how fast it draws. I'm gonna leave it at five for now. So we can see what's going on, great. Okay, the next thing that I can see is that we've got, um, so we've got our random, got our random width. That's fine. The other thing that I can see here is that we might want to randomise the opacity of these. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use when you're doing opacity on an image, um, you need to use the tint function. So if you use tint, and the tint function is just it tints the image. So we're going to tint it with white. And this is the opacity, and it's and it can be any number between zero and two five five. So what we're going to use here is we're going to use a random opacity between fifty and two hundred. Okay. So now when we draw, we can see that some of them are a bit transparent and some of them are not. Okay. Cool. I'm happy with that. But the other thing, and we've got our random size, so I'm happy with that. But the other thing that I've got is that she's um, Eloise might have more than one type of wattle. If we use the same illustration, it may start to look clunky and um, sort of tacky. Yeah, so she, I, I think she might want to have um, have a few different drawings of wattle and randomly draw bits of that wattle so it appears more true to a sort of randomized sketch. Yeah, so what we're going to do that, to, to make that happen is that we're going to load our images into an array here called images. So I'm just going to delete that. Um, I'm going to change this to images. So we've got our variable images. We're going to load our images into an array. Uh, you might have seen this before in some of the other videos. Um, so they're in an array there and then what we can do here is we can get a random image from that array. So we can use p5's random function to randomly get that image. Yeah. Let's see how that goes. Hey, oh sorry, I just wanted to show you that I've got three brushes here. Yeah. So I've got this guy and this guy and this guy. Yeah. So um, and I've loaded them up there. Brush one, brush two, brush three. And now when I draw, it randomly draws a different brush. Okay, um, so that's starting to look good. It's starting to look a bit more scattered. It's starting to look a little bit, um, a little bit sort of. It has a bit more depth, yeah, um, than our original brush. So that's cool. I'll leave it at that. The only other thing I would like to show you is that I'd love it that if you, I thought that Eloise might want to restrict you're moving to another screen um, dependent on how, how much you've, you've colored in. 
Yeah. So I want to um, figure out that once we've drawn about 40 images, yeah, so 40 brush images have been placed, then I want to let something happen. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to count the cycle that we're on. At the moment we're on zero, so we've got a variable called cycle and it's zero. We're going to let the maximum cycles be 40 because after 40 I want to do something. And then um, I'm going to increment the cycle inside this every time I draw. Yeah, before I draw, I'll increment the cycle. And then I let's just get rid of that. And then if inside the draw function, if the cycle equals max cycle, so if it equals 40, then I'm going to just write some text on the screen. Okay, so now if I draw, should have done a lower number, but hey, there we go. We're free to move on. So 40 got 40 images got draw got drawn, and then um, and then we've we've shown that piece of text. So you could do something like here, like you could say, um, you know, set a variable to. You could set the screen variable here. So you could say screen um, equals. Two. So you could increment the screen variable here once you've drawn 30 things um, in relation to your tap essay and it could automatically move on. Or you could um, show a button, you know, show that text that says click here to move on. Or you could show another image here. Um, uh, so yeah. So there we go. I hope that helps. I hope that helps you, Eloise, and I hope it helps everyone else. Um, so yeah, I will leave it at that.